uh, actors in all of this was EU membership. I wonder if you could reflect on the significance of the anniversary and almost the state of the Good Friday Agreement now, three years post-Brexit. Yes, thanks very much, Joel. I suppose um, when you think about the 1998 agreement, you can think about the EU as providing the context to that agreement. Um, how much more difficult might it have been to reach that agreement if Ireland and the UK as the two state actors involved, let alone the parties on the ground in Northern Ireland, had to think about the trade border on top of everything else that was going on into April 1998. So, when the two were already sharing and pooling um, their legal orders and to a certain extent even their sovereignty in the context of the European Union, it made bits of the 1998 agreement sing when we had um, the idea of North-South cooperation. An awful lot of that was grounded on shared issues from agriculture um, through that were based on a grounding of EU law. And that agriculture and fisheries um, cooperation, say, that could exist, and then into tourism and transport, all of that was found to well, heavily rely on overlaps in EU law between Northern Ireland's jurisdiction and Ireland's jurisdiction. That facilitated strand two of the 1998 agreement and all of that cooperative element that was going on within it. So if you like, a pooling of sovereignty at a European level fitted with a complex interaction between two states to reach a peace agreement in the context of Northern Ireland. That peace agreement in 1998 basically said these two states don't sit just as neighbours. They don't sit alongside each other. In the context of Northern Ireland, they are in an intense cooperative arrangement. And the EU facilitated that. The problem is, once the UK was torn out of that EU framework, how do you make North-South cooperation, how do you make the 1998 agreements equality arrangements work? With so much of that uh, arrangement um, and those provisions relied upon fundamentals of EU law. And so the Brexit process and the broad idea of Northern Ireland's place in the Brexit process became how do we substitute something in for the arrangement that previously existed to protect what Theresa May repeatedly called the Belfast Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts, the letter and spirit of this agreement. So how do you create something to protect it? For May, that was a backstop that effectively kept the entire of the UK in close alignment with the EU. So Northern Ireland would retain all of its elements of linkage into the EU as part of an arrangement for the entire of the UK. For Johnson, Sunak and Truss, that was much more we will separate out Northern Ireland. We will give special status to Northern Ireland in a, in a very distinct way from the remainder of the United Kingdom. And it will exist in a special relationship with the EU. If you like, if you go through the Johnson Protocol into the Sunak framework, you get different iterations of trying to make those special arrangements for Northern Ireland work. And some of the tensions that brings out of, well, changing Northern Ireland's relationship with the rest of the United Kingdom.